How do we keep people engaged when there's a lot going on, they're under pressure, and sometimes I, as a leader, might be too busy to pay them proper attention? Well, there are three things that you can do about engagement without having to get fancy or even spend、uh, any money. Involvement, stimulation, and praise. So, firstly, involvement. I think one of the keys to this, as the leader, is neither pretending that you know everything nor allowing yourself to know everything. One of the reasons you've become a leader is because you're resourceful. What sometimes happens, though, is that that backfires. A very resourceful leader can get in the way of the team learning to be resourceful. So, asking the team for solutions and admitting that you don't know is a really Important and powerful way of getting people interested in adding something to the team, which is more than the bare minimum. Stimulation. The key to this is giving them interesting tasks, maybe things that you would prefer to do, but you recognise that somebody would get a kick out of doing it in your place. The difficulty for the leader here is to recognise that the team member. Or members, if you give it to a small group, are not going to do the same job as you would have done, and this is about letting go of how you would have done it, letting go of the notion that your way is the only way. It also opens you up to the possibility of your team making mistakes and your name being attached to them. This is a really important part of showing your trust in the team and being able to take a few bits of embarrassment, a few blows on their behalf. That will certainly, in and of itself, win you engagement and well deserved too, because you will be putting yourself out there for them, and they will then be much more inclined to put themselves out there for you. Praise. Praise is vital, and it's often spoken about and then dismissed very quickly. It's something that a lot of leaders find tricky, either because they don't want to patronise their people, or because they hide behind the notion that their people really don't need praise for the things that they should be doing anyway. I haven't come across a person or a situation where praise didn't work in its own way. We don't have to be particularly gushing about it, but we do have to be specific, and that helps us to take a lot of the patronising potential out of it. If I say to you, "Oh, great job the other day! Thank you so much. I thought you were terrific," that might sound all right, but actually, the chances are that you'll think I'm just buttering you up. But if I were to say, "I wanted to say thank you." And well done for yesterday during the presentation, when you sorted out the electronics. That really saved the day. I thought it was going to go horribly wrong. I was mightily relieved. That's actually citing something really specific, and I think the thing about praise, if anything, is it has to be specific and it has to be meant. Best of all. If you can include a feeling in there, in other words, how that person made you feel as a result of their action, so much the better. And those, I think, are three really valuable ingredients to getting your team engaged, especially when things are really, really tough. So that's involvement, stimulation, and praise.